Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and for those of you expecting some more serious business, well, right now some serious updates have broken the serious business, so I decided to go the other way. You saw, might have seen my video about toy scale solar systems, so I thought let's do a career mode mm -hmm. playthrough for a while, just see how far we get, what other interesting problems we have. So we're going to do just our usual stuff, launch our first vessel, um, you know, collect science data. We're going to go straight to the straight to the vehicle assembly building because, of course, we don't have to deal with the uh, Kerbal Construction Time mod. We can go straight to our usual Mark 16 parachute. We have the Flea solid rocket booster motor thingy. And uh, while we're here, let's grab... We're going to put a bunch of these Mystery Goo packages on here. Mystery Goo, thank you. We're going to put, like, what, three of them on? Yeah, three should be enough, right? There we go. That's that's our starting vehicle. Let's make sure I don't make this mistake that I have made several times. Launch! Let's see what happens. So, right, yes, as you know, or as you may know... Toy scale solar system makes the planets one tenth of their size in Kerbal Space Program. So Kerbin is 60 kilometers across, or sorry, 60 kilometers radius, which I believe makes it roughly the same size as the planets in Space Engineers. I had actually considered briefly doing a bit series where I try to drill my way through a, a Space Engineers planet. But uh, I don't actually have the time or patience to do that. Okay, so let's... Uh, we've done that. We've got an EVA. We're going to do these things using all the tricks that we know, right? So, uh, EVA report. Cult, keep that. And I'm going to take the data and board this. Okay, we're ready to go. And, well, we can't go straight up here. If we go straight up, we'll make it straight into space. And because the atmosphere is so thin, we will come down and pancake into the ground. But let's uh, go for it. So I'm immediately kind of going sideways, trying to get a little... Oh, not too much. high. Not too high. Not too low, though. There we go. So we're skipping up relatively high. Um, I'm using Ferrum Aerospace here because Ferrum Aerospace actually fixes a number of problems that Toy Scale sol Solar System has. If you use the stock Toy Scale Solar System... You will find that parachutes don't work, which is an altogether vastly more interesting career mode, especially when you consider the only engines you have early on are solid rocket motors. Okay, we're moving at Mach 1. I'm not sure that's the best speed to deploy a parachute just yet, and I'm not really bleeding off speed quickly enough. Oh, darn, oh, darny, 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 darny. Just deploy the parachute and hope that it doesn't... No! Yeah, we killed Jebediah straight away. One of the other fun things about Toy Scale Solar System, <laughs> other than killing Jebediah on the very first mission, is the landscape. Like, I don't know, because of the, the way the rendering works, the landscape literally rolls in faster than the game can render it. Okay, so that was a really, really bad start. <laughs> I am not used to having that little altitude available to me, and you might hear one of the kitties scratching themselves. Amy decided to fit the kitties with bells after one of them brought a little present home. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, should we try escaping the atmosphere? Let's do that. Uh, did we collect any science? It says we now have nine science. We could spend it on something like rocket engines. There we'll go. That'll help me just a bit. Actually, sep oh, I should have got stack separators instead. And I've only got four science, so not enough. Let's actually try flying that mission again. Clearly... The pilot was at fault. Yes, I know you're big fans of Jebediah, but it is entirely possible that he might make a mistake. So instead of going to the left, we shall go to the right. Or rather, since we're looking north, we will go east rather than west. Go east, young man. Go east. Okay, let's try this again. Crew report. Got that. Got my mystery goo. Got my EVA. Stealing, taking that data, storing that data, EVAing data, boarding data, and st oh, I have no stability control now, so let's do this. Oh, there we go. And 
up high. Oh, no, and once again doing this weird thing. Get, make sure we're going up. Okay. Ah, you see, look, speed is much more reasonable now, so I can deploy the parachute and, and it will not destroy me. Look at these islands here, though. I'm up at 12 kilometers, of course, relatively speaking. The atmospheric density is low enough that the parachute won't deploy fully just yet. But soon, soon, my friends, we will experience the full grip of this atmosphere. There we go. Slowing us right down there at one kilometer up. Okay, let's collect the mystery goo here. Yes, Kitty, I can hear you there in the background. Jingly, jingly, jangly. Okay, uh, one of the things the developers have done is fix the time warp. However, the real, or sorry, the toy scale solar system doesn't yet have the science biome set up. So there's no high altitude science that is available on Kerbin because it uses the standard 20 plus kilometer altitude for high altitude science. And by that point, you're in space. Okay, so, oh grab this. I'm running this on one... I might be running this on 1.04 or 1.05. I can't remember. Keep that data. EVA and do the EVA report. Take that. Take data. Store data. Board. Yes, I'm going to board and dump these experiments, whatever that is. Get my crew report on. Okay, now I can EVA one last time and just fall into the water. Oh! Let's get an EVA report while I'm sinking to the bottom. Uh, that could be bad. Is he going to come back up? Oh yes, he's coming back up to the surface. That is very good. Meanwhile, I can just actually recover this vessel. I <laughs> like Jebediah bouncing out of the water for just a moment there. Okay, yes, we have a ton of science now. We have a ton of funds. Let's unlock the important stuff. Engineering, yes. Um, more parachutes. Do we have anything? Heat shields we're probably not going to need. We're not going to really need any of these. We might need a radiator panel. I doubt it, though. But jet new engines, yes, we're definitely going to want those. Okay. Come out of this. And with all this money, of course... Oh, I do want to do that. I want to uh, upgrade my facility so that we have access to... Um, EVA reports in space, because we are going to go to space, escape the atmosphere, we're going to orbit Kerbin. Yes. So, let's build a an orbit-capable spacecraft using my newfound science. Okay, ditch this. Um, and what have we got here? We have stack decouplers and then of course we should have yes we have the magic new science junior serious science there for the serious scientist so i should stick a couple of on a couple of those on there we'll put some fuel tanks on we're just going to ditch this stage after we have recovered the science in orbit that should be sufficient and engine wise we're going to use the vectoring engine and we still have these tiny little basic fins. I'm just going to put like six of those on the bottom just to provide some general, you know, keep going the right direction level of stability. Okay, who should we have flying? Let's have Valentina Kerman. There we go. Did I kill Bill? Oh, Bill's still out there, isn't he? Uh, no, no, that's okay. Uh, save and continue. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, uh, there he is. Let's recover Bill Kerman. Come on back to the ranch with the science you brought. Now we have 16 science. Do we have enough to do anything useful here? Yeah, we could actually unlock these parts that we're not really caring about, such as that micro-landing strut. Sure, it's another step towards more science. More science is always something we can appreciate. Aha! Now we should be ready to go. And who have we got as a pilot? Bob Kerman. No, we don't want that. We want Valentina. She doesn't have any experience. Valentina Kerman standing by, looking straight up at the Great Black Yonder, which is but seven kilometers away. Okay, and I can pretty much... Yeah, this is where I'm going to view it from, so I'm just getting ready. 
and there we go. And immediately pretty much start turning this over because otherwise, okay, observe materially. Otherwise, there's not that much to to do. There's no room for a gravity turn here. Yes, keep data, um, crew report. Oh, I've already got crew report from over the water. Okay, reset that experiment and flatten out my trajectory a bit. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we are set already. And I totally forgot to get any science from, from Valentina there. So, well, she's just going to enjoy the sight. From here, she can see more of the world than any other Kerbal has ever seen in the history of Kerbal Dum. Tiny Kerbal Dum. We should actually come up with a name. I mean, if Kerbals are, like, one-tenth scale humans with green skins. What would be these these creatures? Do we really want to still call them Kerbals if they're one-tenth scale Kerbals? Min Mindles? Minibles? Uh, no, no, no. Tinyballs? Uh, small ball? Because, yeah, we could call these guys small balls and one the, the other one's big balls. That would make sense. Totally make sense. Okay... So we got the uh, materials base science. There, beautiful near Kerbin. Observe the mystery goo from space. What does it tell us? Well, take the crew report. Yes, we have all these things and we're bringing them back. Now we can EVA and collect some science from here, of course. EVA report. And take and... You know what, actually, we need to RCS... We need to store first. Store the experiments. Okay. So let's grab these sciences while we're here. Take those. Take those. And down under here is the last one. Give me your data. Give me it now. I need the information. Your information is very important to the operating of this program. That's Werner obviously going into full, you know, questionable past mode. Um, EVA report. Above water, yes, let's do that. Board. Sweet. Okay, so we got more data than we can ever possibly need. And now we should think about returning home. Maybe we should try... Where should we return home? Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just land in the desert. Why not? Okay, so we'll just point ourselves retrograde and hopefully... This will uh, let us survive. Now, we do have to be kind of careful because we do need to bleed off speed and everything. Uh, so I'm going to keep the engines attached just in case things go wrong. Okay, so watch the altitude, the periaps drop down until it's... Well, I guess normally it would be about 35 kilometers. So I'm going to do that. There we go. 3,700. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do fine. This is like coming from a 120 kilometer orbit and then on the other side. Maybe I should go a little lower to land in that bay. Or maybe I might need to go a little higher. Who knows? That's half the fun of never having worked in these regimes before. I get tons of fuel left as well. I could probably soft land this thing if I really wanted. Or at least soft land it until it breaks. Well, let's find out. Okay. So we're now starting to slow down. I wonder what way the whole thing will naturally turn when given the opportunity. I think aerodynamics will probably point us rocket direction to the back. Okay. Well, it's it, we're only traveling at Mach 2, actually, so it's actually quite reasonable. I should have, before I went into the atmosphere, I should have done that. Okay, got that. Good, good. Kerbal data get some data from the grasslands here. Can I get data from these? No, of course, because they're biome independent, but I'm going to keep that data nevertheless. It's useful to have. And now, now we're just slicing through the atmosphere. You know what? I think I'm going to ditch the capsule now. There we go. See what happens. I'm going to turn off my stability control and watch this thing. It actually looks pretty cool the way that thing's moving there. Oh no, we're flying back into space. Nope, 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 nope. Now, I wonder if the load distances have been adjusted. I'm presuming the, the toy solar system developers didn't do anything to tweak the load distances. Therefore, we'll probably 
keep track of this thing until it hits the ground. It's it may only be you know three four hundred meters away, but relatively speaking, that's five six kilometers, and it's going to be low enough that it might actually hit some. Oh, you know what? I've realized that we're going very fast still. And at some point, we're going to hit these mountains. And I hope we don't literally hit those mountains. 1.3 kilometers. Um, so we got to wait for the parachute to deploy safely. <laughs> I don't know what the parameters are for that. Oh, dear. Well, actually, we're okay. We're going to make it over these, these mountains here. But if I was, like, a little lower, I suspect these things are going to smash into the mountains here. Watch. Watch, watch, watch. Somewhere out here. This is going to totally crash into the side of the mountains. Watch. Just waiting. Yay! <laughs> I totally called it. <laughs> uh, I think polar orbits might actually be safer here. Uh, I, I mean, we are completely working in realms unbeknownst to rocket scientists. We are... In, in a region which just is far too weird for me to really actually have any handle on reality. All my training, whatever, all, all my experience, all my knowledge have left me and I am now trying to figure out how to slow this thing down enough. Look, the atmosphere is really coming up fast, but the problem is I'm really losing altitude really quick. So maybe, oh, try that, slow myself down, come on! No! Oh! Crash. Yeah. So that's two astronauts killed so far because parachutes don't deploy particularly well. Like, notice I was still going 250 meters per second. That would have killed me in regular Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> oh man, that that is um, actually going back to the Space Center now. Wow, so I've managed to kill off both Valentina and Jebediah Kerman. I bet you guys thought this would be super easy, right? I certainly did as well. Uh, that's what happens when you have absolutely no experience. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave this here. I'm uh, Scott Manley. Fly safe.